Right. Well, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to attend the ACES chapter's uh, evening event here on expanding your technical skills through internship experiences. We're going to look at a few different things. Uh, first of all, emerging jobs. I don't know if you're aware, but the NLIS and the MARA program both have program uh, evaluation pages, program performance pages. And on there, we keep a lot of data, like um, surveys of uh, alumni and um, information about progress within classes. But we also have things like job surveys. And so I'll just look at a few items from your 2013 SLIS uh, job survey. Uh, tie it to internship opportunities and technical skills uh, that are currently in our SLIS database. And then talk about how you might create your own opportunity and what you do when you're ready as far as the application process. Now, this came from that 2013 survey. And the reason I'm showing it here uh, is that there are a number of what uh, they are saying are emerging library duties across all listings. But I don't believe these duties have to be within a library. And I think that's how you have to start thinking, too. You have fantastic skills that can be applied in almost any environment. Your skills are very valuable. And don't limit yourself because of the job market to one a dream of sitting in a public library, for example. Uh, start stretching your imagination. Think about where you might apply your skills and uh, be useful and also uh, enjoy what you're doing. So I'm calling these emerging jobs for information professionals, uh, even though they look like they're tasks or duties that you might be performing. And this is on that MLIS performance page. The link is shown there at the bottom. Uh, what I wanted to stress before we even look at the internships, though, is that you also are, because of the nature of this program being completely online, very good at using communication technologies and other technologies that you pick up first in Library 203. And then, out of necessity, because you're trying to communicate and interact with each other in classes. And these are just a list of the uh, kinds of software platforms that students that have responded to a survey one of my other students was doing uh, mentioned as uh, being very useful for interns. Uh, Skype, you see there, a uh, number of people are using Google Plus, Google Hangouts. Uh, and then, of course, you want to be familiar with those social media tools, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Now, in our database, uh, we looked at some um, listings that had a few more technical skills being called for than the traditional library position might. Uh, and there are some categories that you might think about when you're looking for internships like this. Uh, industry or corporate positions, uh, positions within the government, and then special libraries. That's where you uh, find uh, a little bit of a difference in probably the uh, not so much the type of task, but the amount of time you would spend on a different type of task. So first, uh, and I have to thank our internship student assistant, Melissa LaFranchise. Uh, she uh, assists me with the, the internship program overall. She's fantastic. And what she is doing uh, is a combination of a lot of tasks, include learning how to use Drupal and learning how to manage our database and clean it up. So right there, my own assistant is mastering technical skills uh, as she's helping with this uh, project that she's doing for me. And uh, what she did was go through the SLIS internship database and find a number of listings for web development, web design, and social media. And you're going to see these pop up again in other categories because all organizations need people that have these skills. So uh, through her search of our internship database, she found more than 90 matches uh, in February for both on-site and virtual opportunities that are uh, focused either on these technical tasks exclusively or at least quite a bit of focus. Most of them, though, that she was looking at out of the 90 are more traditional library tasks 
intermingled with a beginning of web design, social media, and so on. So we're starting to see that convergence of skills between emerging technologies and traditional tasks. One example uh, that she found is a medical library intern. And uh, what I think you need to do is think about your own past experiences and your interests. What are you really excited about? Because when I talk about technical skills, well, that's fine if you have them. But what are you going to apply them to? You know, you need another area of interest. And uh, it might be that you've had experience before in the medical field or that you would like to uh, work in the medical field. In this case, uh, this medical library intern would be working on projects like the website, but mobile apps as well, and updating the catalog, uh, reference, special projects, uh, all within a medical setting. So I would also start thinking about what kind of environment would you like to work within? Here is a, uh, an advertisement for Electronic Services Librarian at the Marin County Free Library. And uh, students who have worked here have had a fantastic experience. But you'll see the red arrows pointing down to a lot of different kinds of projects. That's what you want to look for. What are they going to allow me to do? In this case, integrate Web 2.0 services and web services related to summer reading programs. So there's your traditional. But you're learning to apply these technologies to them. The digital librarian intern is uh, very interesting as well. Uh, it's a non-archival position on site. And here, they do want somebody familiar with Drupal. Now, how do you get familiar with Drupal? Well, you could start looking for tutorials. A lot of the interns, when they have a position, actually do that to try to get up to speed. But I do know that my own assistants get trained. And we have courses in Drupal uh, that you can sign up for. So think about the type of internship you might want, the kinds of skills or tasks you would enjoy doing, uh, and learning more about, and then plan your uh, classwork to enable you to be good at that and to get this familiarity. They're not saying you've got to be good at it or have experience. They're saying be familiar with it. It's easy to pick up. Um, it can be complicated if they want you to do more, but it's easy to pick up if you're going to just enter information, provide content, uh, do a little bit of design. A WordPress website virtual intern. Um, some of the students that uh, I have in our um, Library 298, the um, advanced studies, special studies, uh, they uh, are familiar with WordPress because of their own experiences. They've started a blog that way. Don't be afraid to do that. And if your instructors ask you to do a blog for class, be glad, because that gives you experience you might be able to say you have if you're applying for one of these uh, internships. Now, this one also wants you to do a little more than just set up that blog. They also want you to know about widgets and plugs in, doing a little more with the interface than just leaving it as it is. And here's a website intern specifically. And in this case, it's for another library. And uh, they want somebody really good in HTML, editing, and writing skills, and experience again with Drupal, and understanding analytics. Um, if you do web design uh, for the, <laughs> I don't have that, but I'll get it for you. Uh, the, um, excuse me, the um, HTML and the editing skills are good, but you have to understand whether or not what you're doing is effective, and that's where the analytics come into play. So don't think just the technical skills are enough. What else can you do to help the organization you're working for uh, understand what you're getting out of, what you create with those technical skills? And then what do you do about the information that you gather? How do you analyze it and apply it to improve their um, operations? That's basically what they want you for. Now, this is from one of my students now. I don't have the name down because uh, I didn't have time to ask permission. So uh, I don't think you can get who it is from this. But uh, I got a kick out of this because uh, this student uh, is learning a lot about spreadsheets, but also about developing an app. And that really is the whole focus of this internship. And what she's saying is, 
she's learning coding. She's working with students who are much better at programming than she is. Uh, and she's hoping that she can just uh, contribute to the work of the team. But she's also learning about uh, wireframes uh, using NinjaMock. And I'll tell you, I learned so much about the new technologies and the new software, especially in applications that are available from the students that are in these internship positions. Now, do remember they expect you to be a student who wants to learn, so you don't have to know everything, but be very careful about the qualifications they ask you for. If they're required, they don't want you to pretend you have them. Uh, they want you to be sure that you do, but uh, in most cases, they know you're learning and they will help you learn how to do this. So this is one actual internship, and this is another one. Uh, again, one of my students who is an intern who is working with Drupal, more Drupal. Uh, you're going to see that a lot. But what this student says is Library 240 information, technology tools and applications prepared that student for this position. And always, if you're thinking about web design, uh, don't think you're only going to use the content management system. Get into the HTML, the CSS, understand what's behind the scenes there so you could tweak them. Now, there's another uh, classification then. Those were all about web design. Uh, a little bit about social media in there, but not a lot yet. Uh, this one is about database design and database management. And if you hear a lot about big data and you hear about data analytics, uh, that's the way we're going, we're moving, and we even have an instructor, uh, Michelle Chen, I don't know if any of you have had her course yet, who was hired specifically because of her experience with big data. We're going to see a lot more about opportunities in this field. And uh, the students who went through the database found that there are some positions, 40 matches, that mentioned the term database. So she was searching on keywords. Uh, they're both on site and virtual opportunities. And uh, they look at database design or administration. But usually, you're not going to be a database designer. You're going to be asked to do something else. But you will be um, expected to understand databases, be able to use them, and in some cases, learn how to design them. One instance is a digital archives intern. If you take a look at the green arrow down there, you'll see that they do want skills in database creation and management. And uh, where do you learn that? Right away, right? Uh, in 202. So you've got courses that will prepare you somewhat. And then you decide what you're really interested in. And don't be afraid to develop more on your own. Uh, you can do that even outside of class if you have any time. But also look down below that. They mention uh, technical proficiency on the PC and some SharePoint experience. We're going to be hearing a lot more about SharePoint. We have to find a way uh, to help you uh, gain some skills in uh, SharePoint as well. That's uh, moving in that direction. I'm from records management, information management, archival area. Uh, but uh, that is something that we have to deal with. And there are a lot of plug-in software programs that are being accredited, approved, certified, I should say, uh, by the Department of Defense here in the US that will take SharePoint to the next level when it comes to managing records that might be there, even across enterprises and across uh, countries if they wanted to do that across borders. So keep learning about things that pop out in these uh, listings as of interest to you. And then see what else is related and what else can you learn. So here comes the records management that I mentioned. And this is for a records management facilitator uh, at the US Fish and Wildlife Service. And uh, it is a government agency. And they do want somebody who understands digital asset management, preservation, digitization, uh, records management, database management, and on and on. So a lot goes into there. And when we uh, talk about records, uh, we are not we're, we are worried about physical records and boxes, yes. But we're not saying for you, for the technology, that's what we expect you to do. We expect people to be able to uh, handle all of their content, all of the data, all of the information for whatever purpose it was created, and for as long as it will be useful. And that's where you see us going with uh, a lot of opportunity in this field, digital asset management field, records management, and even digital archiving. Uh, and here's the archives intern then. And you'll see again the description of this talks about an archival database. There's a convergence 
of skills from a lot of different areas like libraries and museums and archives and record centers and business and industry. And so uh, think about an environment you might want to work in and your title might be appropriate to that environment, but your task still might be pretty similar to somebody else with a different title in a different um, organization. And here's your digital asset management. In turn, again, uh, spreadsheets and databases are mentioned here. Uh, but they are also talking about uh, specifically uh, digital asset management using a uh, art store shared shelf system. So if you were interested in this, you would be going out on the internet and trying to find out what the heck they're talking about, okay? We, uh, look at these very carefully and see if there's something in there you don't understand and be prepared to understand it before you apply for the position. And this is an example from uh, one of my students again. Uh, who is working in an internship and working on projects that require uh, this person to be really good at metadata and keywords. And uh, for a while we were calling, you know, folksonomy, a combination of your, your taxonomy and your tagging. But uh, really sophisticated now systems use metadata and also keywords that the user puts in. And uh, she is thanking Dr. Wiedemann for giving her a background here. But this all goes into a database. Uh, so when you think about metadata, you're really thinking about how you want to organize that anyway, right? And it gets back to things like, you know, name, address, what Whatever, those are your fields in a database and uh, those are elements for your metadata. So uh, there's uh, a lot that you're comfortable with. You just need to learn the terminology that might be included in a job description. And this one I enjoyed <laughs> because, uh, again, it's a current student uh, working on marine ecology data sets. Uh, and again, creating metadata, so same kind of uh, project with metadata, different application to marine ecology, and uh, again going above and beyond and finding a metadata editor by the uh, U.S. Geological um, Survey uh, that will enable her to do the job better in this case. So uh, be very creative, uh, be excited about what you're doing and explore tools that might help you do that. Now, this is the third category. Uh, so we looked at web uh, design development and we looked at database. Uh, this one here is about um, technical internships that uh, are related to the library more, uh, but looking ahead uh, to what can be within that library. And so the picture that's shown on this page is of uh, maker spaces. How many of you have heard about maker spaces? Know what that is? Yes, Kate. You want Kate? You want to explain what you think it is? Uh oh, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> um, maker sp spaces are interactive areas of libraries um, that typically focus on. I'd like to say STEM-related activities, but basically um, building. You could it could be like engineering type stuff where you're building mechanical toys or robots and things like that, or it could be like designing objects for 3D printing. Um, I'm sure other people have um, comments about what kind of activities take place, but it's just kind of a hands-on activities where you it's basically applied learning and it's super fun and it's all the rage. Perfect, yes, exactly. And you see the picture there, it is of a lab, but uh, with equipment that is um, expensive, most people might not have it in their home, like the 3D printers. So groups of people, hobbyists in some cases, sometimes they're called hacker spaces, but they are places for people to go who have interest in doing something, an activity, a hands-on activity to create something. Fab Labs is another term for it, exactly. Uh, and so uh, this, this is um, something new. Uh, because librarians or people who work in libraries need to think differently. Uh, we used to have books. We don't. We we have books, but I I don't know about you. Mine are all in my uh, e-reader. I've got a. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of um, uh, actually a. Huh. 
But there too, I have, I have several. I have the uh, Sony that uh, has been discontinued with all of my 200 and some books in that one. Uh, I do a lot of reading on the iPad. Um, and so we don't have the physical books that we used to have within the library, but that's good. It gives us space, right, to do some fun things and some things that might be more exciting and more useful to us we can read at home. So uh, here we go with a better space uh, utilization. And uh, there's a link on this page to the uh, article that was uh, describing uh, makerspaces, I think, really well. Uh, so let's see what else we have in here. All right, within our database, we only have about 25 matches uh, that uh, relate to this in some way, but they're both on site and virtual. And uh, usually they relate more to digitization efforts, to digital asset management, again, that we heard about before, and still metadata creation. But I wanted to point one out on Makerspace intern, because we do have that within our uh, database for uh, summer and uh, fall still. And uh, it's unpaid, but it is on site. So unfortunately, I don't supervise the on site. I haven't talked to the person who has this right now, but uh, this could be a very good position for someone and up to 180 hours. So that gets you up to four credits if you would like to do that. And uh, we also have Community Publishing Partnership Intern. Uh, and this uh, fits with that makerspace idea. People want to publish on their own, but maybe don't have all the tools or even the knowledge to be able to do that. And so when I was talking about an e-reader, uh, why not uh, help people write and then convert what they write into a book, an e-book that can be read on an e-reader. And uh, in this case, this is a mobile self-publishing lab. So it goes from one place to another. Yes, publish music. Uh, as well, or written work, and this is a really neat idea. Anybody working there? I should have asked. Anybody working at any of those that I mentioned? Okay. All right. Now, this one, uh, what I like, well, first of all, the picture. Anybody uh, know him? Uh, Dr. Lowen. He teaches uh, forceless, and he works at Stanford, and he's fantastic in research, especially with virtual world and gaming. And uh, when he looks for an intern, he sets up projects. And this one has three different projects. And you'll see simple and traditional as film and media collection, right? Digital, I'm now I'm calling traditional. Uh, but also metadata to citation, building a framework. So this is a research project. And then how they got game. And it's a history of interactive video games and simulations, which is really pretty neat. So uh, working with him would really be enlightening, uh, educational, and fun. Here's an archives intern, and uh, this one's listed here too because of the project idea. Uh, what I have found is that if you look for a position that is paid, you will be expected to perform specific tasks. And in some cases, they really look at those tasks almost as if, did you do enough? Did you do enough cataloging to be worth me paying you for a week? If you look at positions that are unpaid, they often say, We've got a lot of projects, and we want to fit you with the right project. So if you are interested in doing something and we have that need, that will be a, a really good fit for you. And so that's how you want to uh, take a look at these unpaid um, uh, internships. And in this case, there are three different kinds, born digital records, uh, very, well, that's what happens anymore, right? Our records are born digital, so you're not seeing uh, as much of a need for digitization, although we would like everything digitized. It's going to take too much time and cost too much money, and in many cases, the uh, necessary life. Uh, is not long enough to be worth the investment of time or money. So uh, eventually, uh, a lot of that paper is going to go away. But Born Digital is not. That's with us. Uh, oral Histories and Interviews and YouTube, fantastic, fun a project. Uh, working with Audacity software for your Mac, right? Uh, outreach and marketing, uh, this won't go away. And this will be important to any. Uh, environment, uh, regardless of what you do, and especially though if you get into social media, they'll be asking you to come up with some ideas for social media, but how are you going to make sure that that's effective? Again, we go back to outreach and marketing, but also for libraries, how are you going to get more people interested in your makerspaces, and how are you going to get funding for those expensive pieces of technology, and that all goes uh, down to uh, outreach marketing, trying to get people to invest. Um, 
So here's an example of one, the Kansas City Public Library. And they do have a traditional need for somebody in collection development, but this same student who is working now, so this is also from a blog, current student, uh, they are also working though with Facebook. And in this case, uh, this student is saying Facebook is still being a pain and I'm trying to figure it out uh, because my posts are image uh, heavy. This is where you really find out, wow, I can do all these wonderful things, but I don't have the space to do it. Uh, my images are too large. What do I do to reduce the size and so on? Uh, also, screencast assignment, and this is something that uh, this student is always working on. So combining traditional with the new normal, I'm calling it. It's not so much non-traditional anymore, right? And emerging technology will always be with it. So I think this is the new normal. We're going to be combining tasks. And this is one example of a uh, Facebook uh, post and uh, Flickr files were brought in uh, to the Facebook post and uh, this was one that the student is very proud that she actually has out there. So when you finally see your work on the web, you feel good about that. Um, now these technical internships here are related to virtual world. There aren't a lot of them. Uh, but this is something I really enjoy uh, and uh, there are a few matches for summer and fall, uh, both on site and virtual, which is interesting. <laughs> virtual community uh, library intern uh, in this case, you're going to see they're non-paid and most of them I've found were virtual. But this is at InWorlds Grid. Anybody here of InWorlds? It's not second life, but something else. Okay. Um, Heather e e eBay is uh, listed as a contact. She used to teach uh, 240, I think it is, or 246. And she was always in second life. And she found in worlds is cheaper and she gets more prints so she could do more building. And she has a fantastic library in in worlds uh, that we have visited. And she's wonderful about providing um, tours for people, but I have had students work for her uh, as an intern and uh, they learn so much from her because she's actually a teacher who wants to share what she knows. Uh, in this case, uh, the uh, this is Henry Lowe again. So uh, in interactive video games and simulations, this is specific uh, title as an archive intern because what he's very interested in, and you'll see again, the projects are the same, but what he's interested in with the emphasis on this one is somebody who's going to figure out, these are a lot of fun, but how do we preserve them so we can show people in the future what we we're doing? You know, can we really do that? Um, what is Pong? Do you re anybody remember Pong? Are you that old? <laughs> it's a game that only has two switches, right? One for each hand and it goes back and forth and I still have that in our basement at home. And I love to bring it out when the kids are home for Christmas just to show them where they were at one point in time. Uh, but I can bring that out and anybody can play it because it's so simple. Uh, but what do we do about some of the games that we're playing now and do we want to preserve them? I think we do, but how do we do that? Henry's researching that. Uh, Vicara, this is near and dear to my heart because I'm the administrator for the Virtual Center for Archives and Records uh, Administration uh, and we have an estate and uh, we want somebody to manage it all the time. I'm always looking for someone. Right now we have six students working on special studies and one intern uh, working in uh, Second Life uh, doing a lot of things. You'll see advertisements for orientations the students are doing. Uh, but you'll see guest speakers on our Swiss colloquia that are actually speaking in Second Life. You'll see a conference coming up. So they're getting skills. Uh, the same as you would somewhere else as far as communicating and organizing and prioritizing and scheduling and uh, on and on. Uh, some of them are working on tutorials for me now so that when they're no longer uh, in my control, <laughs> uh, I will be able to hit a button and hear their voice and see the tutorials they have created so that all that knowledge that they have that they put into training for students can still be there when they're gone so that others can learn from them. So uh, a lot of fun things can happen here. And this is a, an intern also on Swiss Island but working for Lori Bell. You may have seen uh, advertisement for immersive environment courses 
the first one last fall was on uh, Tudor. Uh, students who took it actually lived in a Tudor village in Second Life, uh, dressed that way, assumed personalities, did projects, and then we tried to uh, document, we can't preserve, but we documented the experience they learned how to create machinima. So they're just uh, machine, uh, you know, videos. Uh, and uh, we have sound and we're preserving some of those in our uh, Bacara, in our space there. Uh, but this student, I pointed out just some of the software she tried to use when she first tried to figure out a way to document something. So she was into Camtasia and then tried Fraps and Movie Maker and Jing and Spruts and Screencast software and goes on and on. So uh, these projects, where you're not being paid, you have more flexibility and can explore more. And come with your ideas and say, I would love to figure out how to do such and such. And that might be your student learning outcome for your internship. Now, we don't have everything in our database. What we have in the database is an uh, internship site came to us and said, we want an intern. And we said, let us look at your internship opportunity. We approve it or we don't for our students. But uh, there are other opportunities out there. We don't actively go looking for them because we have limited resources to do that. But if you go out looking for an internship and you find one at the Library of Congress or uh, at uh, Apple or wherever else, and you come back and you say, wow, I've lined up a terrific internship for myself. What can I do to take that for a class that's not in the database? We would work with you and with the site supervisor to get a job listing in the database, but no, it won't be open to everybody else because that's the first fear. What we will ask them to do is under uh, the application process just to put in position filled because you have identified that first. And so here are some examples of the kinds of opportunities that might be out there. Uh, some of them do require, as the last bullet says, more than 135 hours and more than uh, the 15 weeks or the 10 weeks in the summer. When that happens, you can work, but you can only sign up for three or four credits. So you can only really apply 135 hours or 180 hours during a term. And you must start at the beginning of the term and end at the uh, end of the term. Now, if you continue working for them after that, that's not our business, but you would be either volunteering or you'd be getting paid for a part-time job, however that worked out. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's just that we have to uh, gear the internship to real class, which is has a start and an end date, a number of credits you sign up for that you have to earn credit for. Uh, this one here gets more into programming and the first few of these do. Uh, this is at uh, Amazon and they're looking for somebody here uh, who is a user experience design uh, person, uh, an intern that wants to learn how to conceive and design advertising for uh, campaigns that span mobile and Kindle and Amazon and so on. This looks pretty neat. Uh, and then here's another one again, they named it specifically user research intern, it's a little different. Uh, and notice the uh, prerequisites, these are really requirements, they're saying you have to work at least 20 hours a week uh, for a six months duration. Now, okay, obviously that doesn't fit within our, you know, 15 weeks in the fall, but you can work with them and with us to figure out still how this might apply toward an internship for uh, the credits that you need. Normally students for three hours, uh, three credit hours would work uh, nine or ten hours a week. Uh, so this is double that. Uh, web development at Blue State Digital uh, is a uh, position that uh, again you would have to apply for it on your own and then if you were offered that we would have to work with them to approve it and see how it fits. Uh, here's the web development at LLB and that sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? All right, and then a development internship at uh, Leventus. And uh, this one tells you to apply online or send a PDF, but they want somebody with knowledge of SQL and ASP.NET, so somebody with a little more programming, which you can get through our courses, but you have to take the right courses to be prepared for these. Same as uh, this data services intern in Glendale, uh, California. Some of them will be virtual positions, you'll see. Some are going to be um, um, physical, uh, on-site. 
positions. Uh, here's one that's looking for somebody who wants to uh, work at this uh, position, again, related to health field, Metro Health. But they are allowing you to uh, be exposed to different areas that might be of interest to you. And this is an information architect for Gannett. And uh, this might be a lot of fun if you want to get into learning how to do site maps and process flows and navigation schemes. So a lot of organizing going on there. Uh, but they do want someone who is very good with design, media arts, human factors. Uh, and uh, look at the right hand side all the different software that they hope that you will have knowledge of or experience with. But also, willing to learn because I'm sure this won't be all that you'll be exposed to. Now this is from a student post and I just put this in here because I wanted you to see the terminology that's in this one. All right, the student is working in a non-traditional setting, research, uh, for a government agency. And in this case, having to learn the vocabulary that's necessary for Japanese material science. And so the student is uh, researching through papers uh, that run along the lines of, in that second paragraph there, stabilization of metallic supercooled liquid and bulk amorphous alloys. Sound good? Uh, this student is enjoying it. You may not. So you want to really uh, be careful with what you're selecting. And uh, again, the student uh, will be moving from Japan to a study of Italian uh, research, uh, probably within the next week or so. Now this, all right, remember I said emerging technology. Don't get too carried away with the term because technology is always emerging. I actually have a student who found this on site and showed the picture in her blog because it talks about in number four here uh, what to do is if the film breaks. And I wanted to point this out to you because we talked about preserving, right, digital preservation. But look at the challenges that if we truly want to say we want to preserve something that was very important at one time, uh, what kind of state is it in now? And we have to be careful of things like this. Don't put scotch tape on it. It discolors the paper. It wears the, the uh, coating off it. Don't use pins or paper clips that uh, will actually rust and uh, coat the material. Uh, but that same student, or I guess this is a different one, is working for the Academy of Film Archives and uh, ran into this clip. Anybody know who that is? Can you tell from this? It's from 1961. Uh, so again, it's, uh, yeah, John Wayne, it's so, is his name on there somewhere? <laughs> Uh, it's so important that we don't get so carried away with the technology of the future, the emerging technology that we forget, that we had technology in the past that created wonderful objects that have to be preserved. And so we still have to deal with those as well. Um, and so other opportunities. We have two blogs. And on our blog, I have one link for the regular internship blog here. We have a section that says other opportunities. And th those are links to websites that you could click on to go to to search for internships not in our database. And if you find any and you think it might work for you, you can contact me and we can work together to see how that might uh, fill our requirements and fill your needs. So you still need search terms. Think about what you want to do, the technology you like to work with, the type of environment you might want to work in, health field, for example. And uh, these are some database, or I'm sorry, some search terms. They are in the database, some search terms that uh, have been used in order to find positions. So uh, do you want web design? Are you interested in cybersecurity? Just was in a meeting this afternoon on cybersecurity. Somebody from IBM presented. And they're looking for cybersecurity specialists. And you have a course in cybersecurity. You have an instructor uh, that was hired specifically for that. This is going to be a huge field for us. 
And so, are you taking that right now? You're in the right spot. Uh, this is big. And they, uh, IBM was explaining how they even have curricula that they would like to share so that instructors can incorporate that within their classes if they would like to do that. Very cool. So, yeah, uh, think about what you want to do. The big data, as I said before, the analytics, the visualization, oh, all of those uh, fantastic fields that are upcoming that you can get into. So don't forget the past. Look for uh, toward the future. Find out where you're most comfortable. That's what you want to find for an internship. And in this case, um, we have a lot of information on our website and it could be overwhelming. And so last fall, Melissa, my assistant, created a checklist. She looked at the handbook we have for Library 294 and said, oh, can we put this in steps, you know, so students can just go in and check off when they do something. And so that's what she did. We said, yes, we could. Why don't you do that? So she did. And so there is a link here, again, that uh, you can go to in order to see the checklist and there are some dates in there. This one is for summer and fall internships. There are some dates in there. They are recommended. All right. They're not drop dead dates. They are recommended for you to be able to make a nice smooth transition from just looking for a position to actually having one and then getting approved to get into the internship class. Because first you have to find one, you apply, you're offered the job, you accept the job, and then you come to us at that point and ask can I now get into your internship class? And we will say, OK, where do you think you're working? And we'll look again at that internship, and we'll make sure that you meet the criteria, like a GPA of 3.0, no uh, outstanding uh, work to be made up. Uh, and I think you have something like 19 credits under your belt. So you look at the criteria. If you meet the criteria, uh, then uh, you can follow the checklist and get into an internship class. Again, remember, uh, virtual or um, on-site, both are good. And this part I put in because it was in a blog <laughs> post on the internship. And I like this little genius here. He has a brain and he will travel well. What I like to think about you is you have skills. And uh, you will be flexible enough to look at different environments and see which is the one that will best fit your needs and your interests uh, so that uh, you can apply what you've learned but in an atmosphere that you will enjoy. And that is my presentation. I did not stop for questions. <laughs> I didn't see any. So what I'm going to do now is ask, do you have any questions for me? Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, early on, you had shown a, an intern description for someone who was familiar with Drupal. And I'm curious what they mean when they use the phrase familiar with in regards to software and applications. Is it like a moderate, like a not a beginner or advanced, but somewhere in the middle kind of a thing? I think so. I think I'm familiar with Drupal. I haven't had a course in it. I've been trained by Derek, uh, who teaches the course, uh, so that I can do editing, I could create new pages, I could post, but I'm really not doing much more than that. So I'm familiar with it. If somebody wants to teach me more, or if I had a job opportunity I was dying to get, I would get into some tutorials and I would learn more. So I think what they mean is that you have had some experience with it. Uh, you are not just a beginner that you're going to fumble through it, uh, that you feel comfortable in it, but you probably don't know a lot about you know, creating the templates and uh, doing all of those, uh, creating the navigation schemes, that's where we had a lot of trouble too. So uh, that would be my impression. Okay. And then the other question I had, one of the internship descriptions mentioned archival database. Now is that a digital asset management system or something else? Uh, it, it is like that, yes. Yeah. And what it usually is, uh, something specific to uh, archives, often because they're doing preservation. So in the archives, you're normally doing preservation. But yes, the digital asset management database is very similar to that, too. Just probably don't have the term archive in the name of it. OK, thank you. 
The archival ones, probably when you're looking at med metadata as well, we'll have archival, uh, like in coding, uh, metadata that is built in. Uh, what I find with a lot of systems, especially when we're looking at the newer ones with the social media and the electronic discovery systems, uh, they're proprietary and they use their own metadata schema, and so uh, it, you wouldn't be able to transfer uh, your um, information very easily or at all in some cases. Do we have any other questions? Well, there was a lot here, and you had a lot to think about, but if you're ever considering an internship and you would like just to ask some questions offline, my email address is there, and that's the best way to reach me. Just send me an email, and I'd be glad to answer any questions for you. Thank you so much, Pat. We really appreciate you doing this. You're welcome. Anytime. And would you like me to stop the recording or do you want to do that?